Hi, this video is a basic introduction to workflow in Stata. So you can see I have Stata already open. I'm using Stata 13. Older versions of Stata are going to look slightly different from this. I'll talk about the differences in a minute, but the same key components are still there. So Stata is a program for analyzing and manipulating data. And in general, the way that you interact with Stata is by giving it a series of one-line commands. And you can type those commands down here in this window, which is aptly called command. So I'll give an example. So once I have my command typed out, I'll just hit enter. And you'll see, first of all, the command disappears from the command window, but then it shows up in two other places. So it shows up in this window over here, which is called the review window, and it shows up in the results window over here with something written underneath it. The review window keeps track of all of the commands that you've typed in your current session. So this is useful for two things. First, it helps you keep track of what you've done. But second, you can also click on this. And when I click up here on the command which I already ran, you can see that magically the text of that command appears in the command window. So that means that I can run the same command more than once, or I could go in, I could edit the command and change it to something else, and then run it again. So this is useful uh, because, first of all, you may be interested in running the same command more than one time uh, after you've changed your data in some way. Or it could be the case that you want to slightly modify the command which you ran, either to change an option on it or uh, maybe because you had a typo which gave you an error message, something like that. The results window uh, is where all the interesting stuff is going to be. Uh, so the reason why you're using Stata is presumably because you want to do some kind of analysis of data, and the results window is where you're going to see the results of that analysis. The command that I typed here was kind of boring, and so that's why there isn't very much there. Uh, however, this is a useful command, and so I want to tell you about it. Uh, so CD stands for change directory. And then this right here is just the path to the desktop on my computer. So what this command is telling this data is uh, to set the current directory as my desktop, which means that if I refer to a file without telling Stata where the file is on my computer, then Stata will assume that that file is located on my desktop. So if I tell Stata to use this data set, for example, on my desktop, I have this data set called affairs.dta. It's one of Jeff Wildridge's data sets, and you can download it off the internet yourself. Uh, so affairs.dta. .dta, by the way, is Stata's data format. So this is Stata's format, uh, but you can also, uh, I'm going to show you the command for inputting a, a file in .dta format. It's just going to be called use. It is also possible to import files which are not in Stata format. For that, instead of using the command use, you would have to use the command inchi. But we'll use this one. And so because I've set my current directory to be the desktop, I don't need to tell Stata where to look for this file. I just need to say use, and then the name of the file is affairs, and Stata will know that I mean affairs.dta on my desktop. So uh, now over here, you can see these other windows now have stuff in them. So this is a list of variables, as you would guess for the variables window. So it has the name of the variables, and then it has labels here. Down underneath that, you have properties, properties of a variable. So if I highlight a variable here, it will give properties about that variable. And then I also have the properties of the data set as a whole. Old versions of Stata didn't used to have this. I think this was new with Stata 12, this properties area. Uh, you can see that uh, if I click over on this arrow to the left of the variable name, magically the name of that variable will pop up in the command window. So this is useful when you have commands which invoke the name of some variable. Uh, in older versions of Stata, it used to be the case that you could click anywhere on the variable name and bring up its information down in the command window. Uh, and I guess they changed that because they were adding in this feature that when you click on most of the variable name, now you're going to see the properties of that variable. So that's the variable window, the results window, the review window, and the command window. I want to show you a little bit more what the results window looks like if you actually run something which is modestly interesting. So I'm going to run the command summarize. 
So what you'll see is summarize summarizes all of the variables in your data set. So I get for each variable, I get the number of observations where I have something for that variable. I have the mean value, the standard deviation, the minimum and the maximum for that variable. You'll also notice that I have this thing here. It says more at the bottom of the, of the output. So to get rid of that, what that is just doing is that's saying I have to hit enter to scroll down through my results. So I hit enter a bunch of times and I slowly scroll down, scroll down through my results. Personally, I find that annoying. And so I always set more off. So now if I run the same command again, if I run summarize again, it's gonna automatically go down to the bottom without me having to hit enter a whole bunch of times. So that's this stuff. Um, I wanna show you a couple more things. First of all, I'm showing you commands that you're just typing directly into the command window here. It's also possible to get commands out of the menus up at the top here. Uh, I think most people who become experienced with Stata prefer to type the commands uh, by their name. It's just a faster workflow. When you're just starting off, you might find it useful to look through here just to get a sense of what kinds of things you can do in Stata uh, and, uh, and because you may not know the name of the command yet. For changing the directory, by the way, in new versions of Stata down here at the bottom, you can also just set the directory like, that, like so. Uh, Old versions of Stata don't allow you to have this, this menu like that at the bottom. Uh, so Stata only holds one data set at a time. So you'll notice this variables, it's not classified by what data set it's in, and that's because there's only one data set in memory. And if you tried to bring in a different data set, uh, if you had any unsaved changes to your current data set, then Stata would give you an error message and it wouldn't let you bring in your data set. Uh, bring in the new data set. So I'm gonna show you quickly how to save your data set. So if I wanted to save this data under a new name, let's say I'll call it affairs two. So I just say save and then the title of it because I didn't specify where this file is gonna go. My current directory is the desktop. So I can look over here and on my desktop now I have a file called affairs two. Uh, now, if there's already an existing file with the same name, if I try to run that command, it's gonna give me an error message saying that a file with that name already exists. If I wanted to overwrite that existing file, I just say comma replace at the end of the command. Of course, you may wanna move your data set out of memory without actually saving it. And so to do that, all you have to do is say clear. Okay, that's the basic workflow in Stata. Uh, most of the other videos in this series are gonna be concerned with uh, commands which you can use in Stata. However, uh, there are a couple of other videos about workflow which you'll wanna see. Uh, one is about using help files in Stata, which are very helpful. And then the other is about uh, using log files and do files to run a whole bunch of commands at once and to keep track of what you're doing in a session.